All right, welcome back. A new study funded by Real Estate, which looked into how black Americans are doing financially almost mm -hmm. three years into the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, so according, Josh, uh, to a study, 54% of black Americans reported that their income rose, that's a good thing, in the past 12 months, yeah. but 58% of them said they would lose everything in, uh, in case of a recession, if a recession were to happen. Now, although roughly 60% of black Americans have a gloomy view of the economy, 58% believe that the U.S. economy will rebound in 2023, and 31% think their personal finances will improve. Hmm. So to cope with the recession, experts advise prioritizing pay, uh, paying off debt, building an emergency fund, delaying large purchases, and possibly delaying uh, retirement and yeah. on paper that all sounds good yeah. but I think when you get into the day-to-day -day, again we just talked earlier about how it's hard to save mm -hmm. um, how it's hard to balance uh, the, the the rising prices of your staples that that you need every day like eggs and sugar and right. butter and milk and things of that For nature. people who don't make um, that's right a decent income if you mm -hmm, will mm -hmm. are concern any concerns for you about some saying this thing is going to happen. Some say it's not happening. I don't think uh, government officials who are in that financial fiscal lane have been as clear as they need to be. Mm. I think, you know, it's a based individual basis, uh, based by case by case. Yeah. Some might be feeling it. Some might not, depending on where you are financially. I, I don't know. Absolutely. I mean, I'm taking the approach of changing my, my lifestyle, changing mm. my spending, mm -hmm. because there are certain things I want to do. I have a, a good job. I make a yeah. Yeah. good income mm -hmm. but I still have goals I want to reach by the end of the year so mm -hmm. it cuts back from going out yeah. as often eating out as often it's tough maybe not buying a new suit was, not those the big big steak dinner at the big yeah, fancy yeah, restaurant yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna leave the filet mignon, <laughs> filet mignon at home and you know cook at home but yeah. again if you're trying to reach certain goals yeah. regardless if you're making a good income or not mm -hmm. sometimes you just have to change your lifestyle and as our parents say, yeah. sometimes you have to cut back. I know, but it's so hard but to do. But you gotta do it. But I'm a sister and I wanna be cute. It's the hair, it's yeah. the nails, it's the brows, it's the lashes. And you are very cute, Thank Courtney. Thank you. You're, look, you're, you're gorgeous. And you're just as handsome. But that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's so yeah. hard. It's like, you, and then and then you end up robbing Peter to pay Paul. And it's like, mm, I need my hair done. Let yeah. me pay my rent on the third instead of the fir first. But, but I mean, see these that, are like for real adjustments that happen. You know, but that you, you have to you, make. You have to make those adjustments because real talk other communities make those adjustments mm -hmm. and they go for the long haul mm -hmm. can't think about always right here right now yeah you have to think about a year from now potentially five years from now what's the end game I think what I'm hearing is discipline absolutely Little discipline Vision. okay okay uh -huh. okay I'm trying all right me too <laughs> retired NBA player Carmelo Anthony is expanding his business portfolio with his latest venture as a partner of ISO uh, 7 Sports Investments, which aims to provide growth capital for sports leagues, teams, and emerging properties worldwide. Uh, his investment firm is led by former WWE co-presidents George Barrios and Michelle Wilson. Anthony will collaborate with uh, ISO's Sevens team to create value across the sports ecosystem and also commit to giving 1% of profits earned to underrepresented populations and underserved communities. So the latest venture follows Anthony's namesake apparel and lifestyle brand Stay Me So, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, which launched late last year. And I just love how these new athletes are athleting, mm -hmm. if you will. They have really, it's a different kind of athlete. Yes. Uh, the way they are able to monetize their careers and their name and their brand, it's just mind blowing and from just a generation or so ago. And it's a great example for the youth who look up to them. Mm -hmm. It's not about just just being out and about, being flashy, showing yeah. that you make a lot of money, but mm -hmm. also turning that money around, investing that money, yeah. growing your, your yeah. empire, growing your financial stability. Yeah, these guys are like bosses through and through, mm -hmm. not only on the court in regards to how they perform, athletically speaking, but you know, off the court, in these boardrooms, you know, sitting down with these big corporations, and them kind of having the power and knowing they have the power to sort of kind of dictate and mm. sway these deals the way they want them to go. They have a place at the table and yeah, they man. are they are setting an example again. I agree. For future generations. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm.
All right, now over to Florida. Miami plastic surgeon Dr. Oliver Simmons has been penalized for his role in a botched Brazilian butt lift surgery oh. that resulted in the death of Tanisha Walker. Wow, the doctor received a $10,000 fine, a letter reprimand against his license, and was required to pay $9,588 in investigation and prosecution costs. He must also lecture on BBL surgery, safety, and risk factors. Dr. Simmons injected fat mm. into Walker's glottal muscles despite her pre existing conditions and medical history. Mm. Now, an autopsy revealed that he violated Florida law during that surgery. You know, I, mm. nothing against, um, you know, cosmetic surgery. I just think yeah. it's a safety factor. You're really going to have to um, do your research mm. and make this sure these doctors and their records are on the up and up. That's a little difficult to do when sisters and some brothers decide to do, you know, the overseas uh, yes. trip. Um, a lot of those doctors are regulated in the same ways that um, they are here in the States. And I know uh, operations like, you know, the BB the Brazilian butt lift it gets a lot of a lot of flack some people mm. say you know why you need to do that others say you know this is what I want to do with my mm. body to enhance it um, I just think whatever you decide to do on the side of getting this procedure done do your research and Bingo. cheaper you know you, you know cheaper always mm. isn't isn't better most times it's not not when it involves your body that's <laughs> right and if you got to like we were saying save a little something yeah. you know to, to go to someone who might be a little bit more pricey but more credible and and more of an expert and a better track record then that's what needs to be done yeah because you have a lot of individuals who are conducting these kinds of procedures and they're not properly licensed mm -hmm. they're not properly trained they're just taking a online course here yeah. and there and going for it yeah and tragedies like this occur okay so your so your thought you know if, if if it's done and it's done right is that cool for you or you don't necessarily care for it? you know a lot of a lot of women are we are if we're into this now oh, yeah you asking me uh, yeah well this, this brother right here I'm all about natural <laughs> natural oh, natural yeah okay. keep it natural you, you got what you but got you, but you but you wouldn't I, you I, wouldn't. I don't knock. I don't knock it okay I don't, I don't knock what I'm it saying. I'm not knocking saying. it but okay. I, I like natural. I hear you. Do you? Okay. And do you well? Well, it could be it could be naturally <laughs> cosmetically redone. <laughs> I'm not knocking it. You're asking. I'm just sharing my candy. So you. you know, I appreciate but, but, but it. If it looks good, it looks good. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I can't win that one. <laughs> <laughs> not with not with some women you wouldn't be able to. Alrighty, according to Bloomberg, black professional women in the U.S. are leaving the country for better living conditions abroad. This small but significant exodus has increased amid the COVID-19 pandemic and social unrest with the U.S., uh, with women looking for better lives for themselves and their children, improve health care, a simpler life to protect their children from school shootings, mm. and the easy access to drugs. Many are turning to social media to share relocation tips, offering coaching and uh, turning uh, ideas uh, into online businesses as well, and obtaining residency. Uh, popular destinations among black Americans include Mexico, Portugal, I didn't know that, and wow. the Caribbean. I'm, I'm part Caribbean, so I would definitely, you know, if, if had the chance, you know, go back to Antigua. That's where my granny's uh, mom's family is from. Yeah. I've got girlfriends mm -hmm. who have left the country, wow. and they left it during the pandemic. Mm. I think the pandemic for them was like, okay, I'm done. This mm -hmm. is it. Um, even though it was a worldwide, you know, situation. But we also had civil unrest. Yes, yes, at the same time, mm -hmm. and they just, they just sought solace. Uh, solace, if you will, in, in another country. So one's in Jamaica. We mm. talk often, okay. you know, thank goodness for social media. Yes. Uh, a lot of uh, girlfriends um, chose to teach over in Dubai. Mm. And um, uh, I've got a girlfriend whose mom uh, lived in Mexico. And that was just the norm. Wow. And, and it was because, you know, they were really tired and fed up with, with the U.S. and they mm. felt like uh, they could be more of who they were meant to be by living uh, overseas. Uh, and nice. they have not looked back. I mean, have bought homes, their children are there, uh, and, and have really become a part of that society, and they're not coming back. That should be an eye-opener. Yeah, better them than me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> America is tough, and sometimes being black in America is tough, but I'm mm. not gonna trade it out for no other country. Yeah, I think I'll stay put, <laughs> but... Um, I think I'm here. But, I, but I you, you, can, you can respect that perspective. Yeah. 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 Um, Pulled up. Like and again, it's a, it should be I say it should be an eye opener mm -hmm. for 
the leaders of our states, mm -hmm. the leaders of our nation, where you That's have good. people who are willing to pack up and, be and go to a whole nother country mm -hmm. where they know little about a whole new game, yeah. but they're willing to take that yeah, chance. But there's this whole new black movement of people actually going back to Africa. You yeah. know, they're they're discovering different countries, the resources, you know, how welcoming it is, uh, and they they are gone. They are out of here. Right on. Yeah. Okay. I don't. I'm, to to each is that's own. it. Thank you. you to each is right own, but uh, it's very it's, again it should be an eye opener for our leaders. I agree. All right. I agree. Still ahead, a shocking discovery, Courtney, hundreds of years later. Hmm, we'll tell you exactly what was found at the birth site of Harriet Tubman. Don't go anywhere, you're watching Fox News Black Report.